Ladies and gentlemen, hello and welcome to this indoor rowing video analysis. This is Florian Ritter from Switzerland. Sent me his footage asking for feedback. And the interesting thing about his footage is that he also sent me his force curves. And you can perfectly see why the force curves are the way they are, why they're not efficient. And what he needs to change is what I'm trying to explain right now. Stay tuned. Florian, first up, the first problem is here at the catch. You're overloading your back. And there are things you can change, there are things you can't change. Let's start with the things you can change. You can, for example, be a bit, bit easier with your legs at the, at the catch. Again, I'm referring to one nice comment on Reddit. Uh, somebody said, you should, you should apply full force at the catch because this is the most efficient time, whereas this is where you can apply most of the energy. True, what do you do with the energy? It's gonna travel right back into the body, so it's complete nonsense. You shouldn't apply full force at the catch, it's just useless. This is exactly what's happening here as well. So you can change that you're easier with your legs at the catch. Second, don't bring your body weight, you see this, all the way to the catch. I'm rewinding a bit now. Just before Florian is at the catch, that, that bit is about enough because this is where most of your body weight now sits on your head war handles just for a brief moment in time. And just before the catch, this is the, this is the last thing you want to do. Absolutely the last thing. So the problem here is that you're not ready for pulling. And you can see the weird motion. His seed extends a bit backward. The back tightens up a bit here at the finish. Let me show you this. The back tightens up right there. And this is clearly the indication that something is overloading the back. And we can also see this with the force curve. Let's bring in the force curve for a moment. This is exactly now. So quick pickup of force, exactly up to this point. And this is where you're losing it. So for one, for one instant, you have to give in. You cannot have a solid drive from the catch because your body isn't positioned the right way. Um, there, there comes in the problem that you can't change on this device or any linear old style erg. It is the way the machine is built. In a boat, we never ever pull on a, on a bar that is straight in front of us. So what you do here is basically a deadlift. If, if I flip this entire picture now, it's basically a deadlift from a deep squat position, also with a weird angle here, and therefore the, the chance of you overloading your back with not a perfect hollow back or stable back position are 101%. In the boats, you never have a straight pull. Actually, never. You go inwards at the catch, you cross your arms, and the, that, that crossing face is the only time where you're pulling straight. However, this is at the point of time where the hands actually, or where the boat is actually so fast that you don't overload your back anymore because all of the force you apply is transferred into boat motion, almost directly, because you just add more speed to already existing quite high boat speed. And towards the finish, our hands go out again. So in a, in a true boat situation, there never is an overload of the spine. However, in a linear situation that we have right here or on the device in the back right there as well, you will always have the chance of you being overloaded. And if you then add a very hard leg drive here, you come up with, with, a, with a force curve that looks like this. Too much for the body to handle, give in, pick up again. I see this um, with, with a lot of athletes, they kick so hard with the legs, Florian, it's not the case with you, but they kick so hard with the legs that this multi-stair buildup is, this is just one, two, three, four, Without any feeling whatsoever, they just, with brute force, try to force the leg drive. Someone, something is going to give in, and it is very likely that it's going to be your back, your shoulders, your hip, or your knees, or your elbow. Make a choice. Solution. Be easy at the catch here. Careful. Load up as much as you can handle. Again, I'm bringing up that comparison. Don't think you're just pulling on a small handlebar. This is not true you're pulling a massive flywheel in a very bad position because you have to pull straight. Imagine this chain is actually not attached to a, to a flywheel, it's actually attached to a car. You would never pull so hard. You would never push so hard without any feeling. Just be careful. Imagine like you're accelerating a car and once it's in motion, you add more momentum. 
but don't start out with adding brute force momentum, which is going to kill you machine. No, it's, it's going to be the back that gives in. It's that simple. You know, sorry if I'm being a bit harsh here, but that's just, it's, it's the facts. You know, we don't have to be nice about facts. Good. Now, Florian, you actually roll with quite a lot of feeling. This is good. However, here, during the leg drive, the first part kills you. The problem continues. As you stabilize your back now with an upward pivot, which I've seen in a lot of videos, your stroke ends, your effective stroke ends right there. Right here, you ask, it's a middle drive. Look at the force curve. So right there. From this point on, you can't add any more force. I made a video about what the perfect force curve looks like and why. I'm gonna link it right there. The reason why I want a flat force curve, let me draw a line of what it should look like. So that soft buildup is good. It's a bit too steep. I'll take a bit more time. And I want a bit of a plateau, extend the plateau all the way here, and then a decline. Why the plateau is important? The peak force is irrelevant. The peak force just creates more water resistance in the boat, useless, or more air resistance uh, if you do in the rowing only. That flat curve actually means consistent acceleration. Imagine there was a, there were a load cell on my hand, and imagine I, I'm, although something is actually traveling away from me and I push it, I can still consistently apply the same amount of force all the way until the curve declines. To put it in other words, as soon as your curve drops, whatever you try to accelerate is running away from you and you cannot add relevant acceleration anymore. And this is exactly what's happening here. You cannot add relevant acceleration anymore. If you don't have force curve, how should you, how should you realize that? Very easy. Just watch what the body does. You see that at a point of time where the legs are in their in the best position to push incredible amounts of weight. Legs are almost extended. With this angle, I bet Florian, with the blink of an eye, no questions asked, you could push 300 kilos on a leg press. Probably yawning and, and having a drink at the same time. So why is it possible that when you try to apply full, for, full force with your legs, you can bend your arms? You can never pull 300 kilos with your arms. Impossible. Just not doable. Which means you don't have a full force connection. That's the conclusion. That flywheel is running away from you and just try, you just try to add momentum somehow and you feel like, oh, my legs are driving empty now. So you add an arm pull. You add something to hold on to that. Don't run away from me. Gone. Stroke is over. Stroke is over and all the lean back you do here, it's empty. You can see there's no connection. You stabilize your back from within your torso. You don't stabilize it with forces that travel from your feet into your body. Not happening. You just stabilize your back because you want to stabilize your back. But there is no connection down here. It's just not happening. This is not the case. But this is what should be the case. As usual, at this part of the video, here comes a solution. How should you solve this? A very, very easy way. Let me show you. I'm referring to Alex again. It's the photo, this is the Biro photo shoot we did one or two years ago. And in, in this video, I asked him, hey, do it wrong a stroke, do it right for a stroke. Maybe you can spot the difference. Wrong. Wrong. Right. Wrong. Wrong, right. Spot the difference? All right, let's go, go through this in detail. What I want here at the catch is a stable shoulder, a full weight distribution on your seat, light hands. This is not the case with Florian. Florian is too stiff. Then I want you to apply leg force in a way that doesn't overload your back. This is exactly what Alex is doing. Carefully with his massive leg power at the catch, he's accelerating until the flywheel or the boat is in motion. So that whenever he adds more force, what he's doing right now, he's, he's able to transfer all the extra force into motion immediately. That's what's rowing all about. It's not that complicated. So, and then, you can do the pivot and you see 
A good indicator if you have athletes who naturally pull high at the finish. You know they have full force connection and <clears throat> they use their body in the right way. Let me show you that again. Drive. Naturally the hands stay the same height, effortlessly. All right, let's follow the wrong stroke. Exactly. What happens, at a, what, what happens if you do it incorrectly? Too much leg power now, your hands just go somewhere way too high, there is no connection because your hands are somewhere here, and you're overloading. You're overloading, it's very difficult, you start to cramp here, try to hold it somehow, but the connection is gone. This would be an equal force, and you can see the shoulder rotation hit the finish because there is no force. You cannot have a shoulder rotation with full force on your hands. It's just impossible. With you, Florian, what you should do is, first of all, just, be come, just before you come to full slide, here, make sure you have slightly bent arms, don't have perfectly straight arms. And now be very careful with the way you start your drive. Be a bit softer at the catch. Try to get some motion into that flywheel first. Drive and now accelerate more and more and more. My athletes know that, you guys know that. When, when, when I write on the training plan, um, you know, these full force sessions when we do these, it always says full force over the middle drive. It doesn't say full force at the catch and it doesn't say full force at the finish. It says full force over the middle drive because this is where the music plays. Yeah. And if you had saved your upper body for this part, you would still have full force connection. It's that simple. It is the position of your lower spine that determines if you have still a full force connection or not. Here. But as you're leaning onto your handlebar just before you catch, you add another flexibility point which shouldn't be there. And it's this point right here. Just have a look. You see, this bendy, 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 whoop, and this is exactly what, what Florian is trying to stabilize. If this, if this were not the case and you could actually hold your lower spine a bit better, it were much easier for you to keep the force curve all the way to this position. Change color. Yeah. Should you have a completely flat force curve, like a rectangle? No, no, impossible, impossible. Simply because I mean, yeah, you can do it in steady state. So I played around with this on a by row. You can achieve it, but this is not useful for a race situation. In a race, you always have to be a bit careful at the catch. You have to make sure that you're a bit easy here. Give it some time to accelerate. If you just can set, have a bit of a plateau in, in race situation, it's enough. And you don't need to extend the force curve all the way to the finish. You need time to, you need time to um, you know, disconnect as well. There's one thing I would like to point out, and you see this, this part right there? I see this quite a lot on the by rower when people do this. Maybe you can spot it. Put it in the comments if you can spot it. It's this. L going back with the upper body, although there is no motion. This here. So it doesn't accelerate anything anymore but this is not the case and you don't do this if you still have full force connection through your feet that's it florian i hope this helps you ladies and gentlemen I hope this helps you as well if you want to send me footage go to armtraining.com dedicated section called video analysis if you want to join us for the indoor rowing life coaching sessions then go to armtraining.com. I do life coaching on in the rowing machines a couple times a week, just group sessions. Join us. It's on armtraining.com, dedicated section called life in the rowing coaching. All right, ladies and gents, that's it for today. Wish you a very good day. I'm looking forward to see you soon. Bye-bye.